What is the problem with this code that we see on the screen? It looks like a normal Django ORM query, user.objects.create, and we pass in the username and password. Now the create function is used heavily in Django applications, you've probably used it yourself, but with the user model, this presents a serious security problem and we're gonna dive into this and see why this is a problem and why it can actually break not only your application's security but also its functionality. Before we do so, if you want to support our channel, check out this coffee page that we have linked below the video and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Now let's get started and look at this page on making queries. We're gonna quickly look for the .create function and we can see in the search results here, 31 instances of this in the documentation. So when you need to create new objects in the database using a Django model class, often you will call the models managers create method. So this is a well-known standard in Django applications. And if you've spent any time at all with Django, you're probably familiar with this function. But the problem with the user model is there are some additional security considerations. So let's dive into that. Now I have a very simple Django project here and it's using the default user model. What we're going to execute here is a manage.py command and that's the shell command to get access to the Django shell. And when we're in the shell, we can access the user model. You can see it's an instance of the model from django.contrib.auth. And let's paste that same query that we had at the start of the video into the terminal here, user.objects.create and the username of John and a password of secret. And that does create the user in the database. So if we access user.objects.all, we get back that query set containing that new user. So this looks like it's worked. We have used a standard ORM query, but we have a problem here and we're gonna open Beekeeper Studio to look at the database and see what the problem is. So we're gonna open this database here, the SQL Lite file inside Beekeeper Studio. We're in here now and we're gonna look at the user table and we're gonna see what data we have in here. So if we right click the table and go to view data, we now see the user record that we have in this table and notice this critical problem. This is here right away for us to see. We have the password and it's stored in plain text. That's the big problem with user.objects.create as we see it here. It's not going to handle the hashing process for this password and it's gonna store it in plain text. And imagine John uses the password secret for all of his social media accounts and his banking applications and so on. Now, if a hacker gets a hold of this database, John is in big trouble and it's a major security concern and a major flaw in your application. So you definitely don't want to be executing these queries here. And furthermore, this is actually going to break Django's authentication system if John tries to log in with this password of secret. So let's try and authenticate here. I'm gonna bring in an import from Django. So from django.contrib.auth, we have this function called authenticate. Let's import that. And what we can do is we can call the authenticate function here. So let's do that just now. And we're gonna pass in a username of John here. And we can pass the correct password that he presumably entered before you saved that to the database with this statement here. And that password was secret. So if we actually call that function, we get back nothing or none in Python. So if the credentials are invalid, we get back none here. And that's exactly what's happened with John. So there's a problem here. If he tries to log in with this password, it's not gonna work. So if you do programmatically save your users using this statement here or something similar, you're gonna have problems with authentication. Now, the reason this is rejected and returns none is because the password that's passed into this function is gonna be hashed using the default hashing algorithm for your Django application. And the hash that's generated is gonna be compared with what is stored in the password column of the user table. And because we're storing the unhashed password, that hash is not gonna match the text secret. And that is why this is being rejected here. And therefore, John cannot authenticate. Now let's see a little bit about Django's hashing functionality. I'm gonna to go to the documentation. And Django has this hashers module that provides a set of functions to create and validate hashed passwords. And these can be used independently from the user model. We're gonna see how the user model actually provides an easy way to actually use these without you needing to worry about it slightly later in the video. So we have a function here called check password and we also have one called make password. And what the make password function is gonna do is it's going to take a password in raw text and it's gonna create that hashed password from that raw text. So let's see that in action just now. If we go back to the shell here, we're going to import the make password function and then we can call that function here and if we pass in the text of secret, which is John's password, we get back the hash here, as you can see below. Now the hashing algorithm is controlled by a setting in Django. Let's go back to the documentation. It's the password hashers setting. And if you're wondering what this setting is by default, let's open this page here and you can see the list of hashers that are set by default. And it's gonna try and use these one after the other. If the first one succeeds, that's the one that's going to be used. And you can see at the top of this list, PBKDF2. 
and that stands for Password Based Key Derivation Function. And of course there are others like Argon2 and Bcrypt that you can also use and Scrypt. So that's a small aside on the password hashers setting. If we go back here, we can see the prefix of the algorithm that's been used. And what I want to show now is how we can solve the problem that this statement actually created. So instead of using the dot create function with the user model, what you can do is use a special function on the user manager, and that's the create user function. So let's try that statement at the bottom here, user.objects.createUser. And this time we're going to create a username of Jim with the same password of secret. Let's execute that and we get back the user Jim. But we're going to see that this has actually handled the hashing successfully automatically. So let's go back to the database and let's refresh this table. And we can see the password for user 2, which is Jim, has now been hashed according to that algorithm. And if we go to the actual source code for Django itself, we're going to have a look at the user manager here. And the manager in this case refers to dot objects that you see on the user model. And that manager has functions such as dot create and dot create user that can be used to interact with the database. So let's go back here. And the key line I want to look at is line 155. And this is the line of code that takes the user model from the line above and it sets the password field on the model. And the value that it sets that to is what's returned by the make password function that we saw earlier. So that's the hash of the password that's passed in as a parameter. So when you call the create user function, this is the line of code that stops the raw password being saved into the database and instead makes the hash and saves that instead. And this exists in a method called create user object. And that is actually called inside this underscore create user method, as you can see here. And the underscore create user method is actually what's called in create user, as you can see in this return statement. So when you call user.objects.createUser, that workflow is going to run and it's going to successfully hash the user's password. Now I want to finish this video just by demonstrating some extra features. For example, let's cover some utilities that Django has for resetting a password. So let's go to the documentation and we're going to look at this page on changing passwords. And it turns out Django actually has a manage.py command for changing a user's password. I didn't know about this. I don't use it often. It's not something you would do in production too often. You don't want to be changing user's passwords on the command line but it's something that might be useful for dev and for admin purposes. So you can run python manage.py change password and then provide the username for which you want to change that password. So let's say we want to change John's password, which is currently stored as plain text and the value secret. We want to change that so that it's not a security concern. What we can do is exit out of the shell here and I'm going to clear the terminal and we can run python manage.py and the command that we're going to run is change password. So that is a new command for me and we're going to change John's password here and we can provide the new password and I'm going to type secret in here so that we can change that. And we've got some validation here kicking in so it needs to be longer than eight characters. Once I've done that, the password has been successfully changed for the user John. We can go back to the database and let's refresh this table and you can see that has now updated. And there's another function that we can use as well. So what I'm going to do is change this password back to secret by editing the database directly. And we can apply that change as you can see here. And when we refresh the table, John's password is still secret. But if we go back to the command line, we can run the python manage.py shell again to go back to the shell. And if we fetch John from the database using user.objects.get and providing that username, we get back the user. And there's a very handy function on the model itself, and that's the set password function. And that's going to handle the hashing of the new password that we're going to pass in here. So let's set this to super secret here. And because we're calling set password, this is going to work and it's going to hash that under the hood. Of course, to actually make the change to the database when you change model fields, you have to call user.save in order to effect that change. So now we can go back to the database and hopefully this password is going to be hashed again. And that has been successful, as you can see here. So what you do when you have a user object, you don't set the password directly like this. That is going to not hash the password if you call user.save. So let's try that out and go back here again. And you can see, again, it's not hashed when you use this approach. So in order to successfully change a password programmatically, you need to call the set password method on the user instance. Once you've done that, it's all going to work and it's going to hash the password successfully, as you can see here. Now, what about Django's registration process? How does this work automatically during registration using Django's built-in tools? So I'm on a page on using Django's authentication system. Some of the tools you might use are this admin user creation form and also the user creation form itself. These are actually subclasses of model forms and they will automatically handle 
hashing a user's password when a user fills in these forms and submits it to the server. And there are also some sign up views as well. So if we search for, for example, the login view that's built into Django here, this is going to take the login credentials, for example, the password of secret, and it's automatically going to hash that password and compare it against the hash in the database. So that's all going to be secure and that's built into Django. And if you're using something like Django Olaf, that has a sign up view and I'm on their documentation just now. This sign up view here is also going to handle the hashing of the password when the user registers. And if you're interested in Django Olaf, I'm going to do a series of videos on this very soon. But that's going to be all for this one. Remember that plain text passwords in the database are very bad news. You definitely don't want to be having that in your Django projects. And you can use some of the utilities we've seen in this video to prevent that particular security risk. For example, using the create user method on the user model manager and also using the user instances set password method to change a password. And of course, using these built in utilities like the login view and the user creation form are also going to help you in this process. So thank you for watching. If you have any further requests, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that we have just linked below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you haven't already done so. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon in the next video.